This is a ramping up your English book review. If you're enjoying our theme of trains and railroads, you might want to check out a catalog from Historic Rail. Their free catalog is aimed mostly at model railroad enthusiasts, but I found some treasures in here worth spending a few dollars on. Sometimes I don't order anything, but I still enjoy the pictures of trains from railroads that no longer exist. This cover features the Burlington Northern, the railroad that pulled the California Zephyr from Chicago to Denver. You can order a model engine or artwork of Burlington Northern, this passenger train pulling into the station. Some pages are devoted to a single railroad like the Great Northern, whose Empire Builder route is now operated by Amtrak. Or the Santa Fe, with its distinctive war bonnet that's designed on its locomotive. Passengers on Amtrak Southwest Chief are retracing the route of the Chief, a famous route operated in the past by Santa Fe railroads. Model railroading is a hobby that's too expensive for me, but I've enjoyed videos, books, and t-shirts that I've ordered over the years. Visitors can visit their website. A book review on a catalog? Why not? I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds and of all ages. This is Episode 6, Segment 2. As you progress through the lessons in this unit on trains and railroads, you should find that your understanding of what you see and hear will grow. This is a critical element in advancing the long, hard road to English proficiency. Researcher Stephen Krashen refers to this feature as comprehensible input. It's the main way to advance in English proficiency. Watching these videos about trains and reading about them are wise actions if improving your English is important to you. It helps to look at some of the language functions you'll master as you advance. Today's function is using conjunctions to show a cause-effect relationship. Now we practiced this in Episode 5 using a complex relationship between railroad workers and the growth of labor unions in the United States. Today, we're working with a more simple relationship. So, the emergence of streamliners came as a result of fewer passengers buying tickets to ride on passenger trains that were run by the many railroad companies in the United States at that time. They were a bold answer to a desperate need. This is part of the story we'll focus on in communicating a cause and effect relationship. The pattern we saw in episode five is the same pattern we use today, except we don't precede the statement with a disclaimer that we're communicating a complex relationship. We can jump right in with the effect. Streamliners were developed and adopted by many railroads. Now let's look at this. Now let's look at the cause. Fewer people were buying tickets for passenger service. Now we put the statements together with the conjunction that tells the readers or the listeners that this is a cause-effect relationship. Streamliners were developed and adopted by many railroads because fewer people were buying tickets for passenger service. The word because establishes the cause-effect relationship between these two facts. To avoid the overuse of the word because, you can change up the conjunction you use. The same phrase can be joined using the word since. Streamliners were developed and adopted by many railroads since fewer people were buying tickets. You can even turn the sentence around using the conjunction since. Since fewer people were buying tickets for railroad service, streamliners were developed and adopted by many railroads. Notice I used a semicolon between the phrases. It would be correct to use a comma, but I prefer using a semicolon. Both would be correct. You can also use the words due to, but you'll have to change the wording a bit. Streamliners were developed and adopted by many railroads due to fewer people buying tickets for passenger service. So here are three ways to join two thoughts to communicate a cause and effect relationship. Because, since, and due to. Practice using these so you can make your own phrases and use conjunctions to show how they're related as cause and effects. A special note about the word because. Although it's related to the idea of cause, it doesn't have the same function. 
In spoken language, you might hear someone say, I did it because I wanted to. In written form, you would have to use an apostrophe here. Notice how this looks. Apostrophe cause demonstrates that you're using the short form of because, not the word cause, which is a noun, not a conjunction. In spoken language, it would sound more like cause. Our website, letscreate.org, has what you'll find helpful for structuring practice for today's lesson. These are called sentence frames. The first one has you fill in the conjunctions we're practicing. The second one is more open-ended, so you can change the wording if needed. To give you more flexibility, we'll use this sentence construction chart. Now, the way this works is you take a group of words from the left and join them with a group of words from the right using the conjunctions at the bottom screen. For example, I was late to work because my child was sick. Mix them up, knowing that you may have to change some of the wording. Practice using the conjunctions in the middle of the chart. Because, since, and due to. So this is your homework for this episode. Feel free to add to this. You can put sentences together and then read them to yourself. Do they sound right? If not, there may be a need to change some of the wording. Just be sure you're still doing a cause and effect idea. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is Episode 6, Segment 2. We'll return with Segment 3 right after this.